If you need to do absolutely anything with your Windows partitions, whether that's extend them, resize, copy, delete, or even recover them, then this free software application is for you. Today's demo is on a bit of software called Partition Assistant 9, which is an application that lets you manage the partitions on your hard disks. As well as the ability to manage partitions, it also allows you to migrate your Windows OS to a new disk or clone an entire hard disk to a new drive. First, let me quickly explain a few basics about disks and partitions. I'll go into the Windows Disk Management tool by right clicking on the Windows logo and then choosing Disk Management. Here we can see the current hard disk installed in this PC. A hard disk or solid state drive is made up of one or more partitions. Operating systems like Windows are installed on a partition. There's two main partition types, there's MBR and GPT. MBR is short for Master Boot Record, and it's a legacy partition type that supports drives up to 2TB in size. The newer partition type is called GPT, which stands for GUID Partition Table. This is generally what's used on modern PCs and supports drives that are larger than 2TB. A typical hard disk might look like this where we have three partitions. We have a small partition at the beginning of the disk. This partition isn't accessible in Windows, it doesn't have a drive letter assigned to it, and it just contains boot information which tells your PC how to boot into Windows. The next partition is the Windows partition. This is the main partition where Windows and all your software applications are installed, and this is usually known as the C drive. And on some computers you may have a third partition called a recovery partition. There are two types of recovery partition. There's a Windows recovery partition, which is only a few hundred megabytes in size, and this allows you to boot into a recovery environment where you can troubleshoot startup problems or boot to a command prompt. The second type is known as a factory restore partition. This partition will be several gigabytes in size as it contains a full factory default Windows image, which allows you to restore the computer back to its factory default state. In other words, the state of the computer when it was turned on for the very first time when it was new. You can get Partition Assistant 9 by browsing to diskpart.com. It's straightforward to download and install. You can choose the standard free version for basic management of partitions, or you can upgrade to get additional features like the ability to migrate Windows to a new drive. There's also a comparison chart so you can check what features are available in the various versions available. In this demo, I'll be using the professional version. I've already downloaded and installed the software, so I'll go ahead and launch the app from the desktop. So this is the main screen which will show you any connected hard disk in the centre of the main window, and you have all the different features available on the left hand side. There are some features which can't be run from the app while Windows is running, so you have the option of creating bootable media, which contains the partition assistant application. You can then boot from the media and carry out the task. Other tasks like the migrate OS to SSD and the disk clone options can be run from the app directly in Windows. To create the boot media, you can click on Make Bootable Media from the Wizards menu. We'll click Next. You can then choose whether to create the boot media on DVD, USB or an ISO file. For most people, creating the USB media will usually be the best option. One example of a feature that requires you to use the boot media is modifying a partition. For example, if you want to split a single partition into two or more partitions, you can't do this while Windows is running. I've already created my boot media, so I'll go ahead and reboot using the boot media. So I've now rebooted using the boot media and it takes you straight into the partition assistant application which looks identical to how it looks when it's running in Windows. You can right click on any partition and choose from one of the options available. For this demo I'll split my Windows partition into two partitions. You can then drag the partitions to your desired size or you can manually specify the sizes in the boxes below. Once you're happy with the sizes you can click OK. Whenever you carry out a task, it doesn't actually get processed until you click on the apply button. This gives you the chance to cancel the operation if you've made a mistake or if you change your mind. You can just click on the discard or undo buttons. Once you're happy though, go ahead and click on apply. You'll get a summary of what's about to happen. You can then click on proceed. You get one more opportunity to back out, but if you're sure you want to do it, click on yes and the partition will then be modified. We get a confirmation message to say it completed successfully, 
I'll now reboot back into Windows. So I'm back in Windows and if we take a look at the disk management tool, we can see my Windows partition has now been split into two partitions. And if I look in File Explorer, I now have a C drive containing my Windows OS, but I've also got a separate E drive. It's still the same physical disk, but it's now split into two drives or partitions. The reason the new partition is using the E drive letter is because D was already taken up by the DVD drive. You can leave it like this, or if you prefer, you can change drive letters so that if you'd like your second partition to be on drive D, you can go into the disk management tool and we can move the DVD drive to a different letter. So that will free up the letter D that we can then use for our second partition. So now we can see that our DVD drive is drive J, our Windows OS drive is drive C, and our new partition is on drive D. Back in the Partition Assistant application, if you right click on a partition, we can see all the other options available. You can resize or move partitions, merge, split, clone, create, delete, or wipe a partition. There's also a tools icon in the top right corner, which will show you all the other tools and wizards available. And now onto what is probably the best feature in this application, and that is the Migrate OS to SSD feature. There's lots of software available that allows you to clone a disk or migrate your OS to a new disk, but you'd be hard pressed to find one that does it as easy as Partition Assistant 9. You can literally migrate your OS to a new disk in just a few mouse clicks. I'll demo that now by connecting a new 4TB disk to this PC and then rebooting back into Windows, because this is a feature that you can run directly from Windows and you don't need to use the boot media. So I've now added a new 4TB disk to this PC and booted into Windows from my original disk where Partition Assistant 9 is installed. I'll go ahead and open the app. So you can see my existing Windows drive here which is disk 0 and the new 4TB disk underneath which is labelled disk 1. One important thing you need to check is the partition type of your current disk. You can see that my current disk here is using the newer GPT partition type and the new 4TB disk is showing as an MBR partition, even though it's a new disk which has never been used before. Before I migrate the OS to the new disk, I need to convert the partition type of the new disk to GPT so it matches the partition type of the old disk. If your existing disk is MBR, then you can just continue on. You just need to ensure that both disks are set as the same type. So either both MBR or both GPT. You shouldn't mix partition types as the new disk will likely not boot after the OS migration is complete. So I'll right click where it says basic MBR and choose convert to GPT disk. I'll click OK. We then need to click apply. Click on proceed and say yes. The disk will then be converted to a GPT partition type and now we're ready to migrate the OS. I'll click on the migrate OS to SSD option. We'll click on next and then we'll choose a destination disk and click next. By default it will keep the partition size the same as the source disk, but you can drag the partition size to however big you want it. Alternatively you can manually specify the partition size by entering the figures in the boxes below. And if you don't want to use the whole disk, you can later create an additional partition in the free space, which will show up as an additional drive letter. I want to use the entire disk, so I'm just going to drag the partition all the way to the end to use the full disk. You can ignore the drive letter at this point. It says it's drive E, but that's because we still have the old disk connected, which is drive C. Once you migrate the OS to the new disk and then remove the old disk, the new disk will then automatically become drive C. So I'll go ahead and click next and click on finish. As always, we need to click on apply and then click on proceed. The migration will then start and just for the purposes of the video, I'll skip ahead to the completion. The migration is completed and we get a confirmation box. 
I'll now shut down the PC, remove the old disk and just leave the new 4TB disk connected and then turn back on. So we're back in Windows on the new disk and if we look in File Explorer, we can see the new disk which has a 4TB capacity. If we go back into Partition Assistant, we can look at the new partition layout. We just have a small boot partition at the beginning of the disk and the rest of the disk is made up of the Windows partition. You'll notice that we don't have any recovery partitions. That's because when you do an OS migration to a new disk, only the boot and Windows partitions are copied to the new disk. It doesn't copy any recovery partitions. If you wanted to include the recovery partition when you upgrade to a new disk, then you would need to use the disk clone wizard instead of the migrate OS wizard. The disk clone wizard will copy the entire disk and all partitions, including the recovery partition. The process is more or less the same as the migrate OS wizard. You click on the disk clone wizard instead, select a source disk, then select a destination disk. The source disk would then be copied or cloned to the new disk, including all partitions. That's it for this demo. Leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback, and give the video a like if you found it useful. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.